Welcome to Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. My name is Desi. Today we'll be talking about the famous Gabby Petito case. For those of you who don't know, here's a quick summary on the case so far. August 12th, the couple were stopped by Mobe, Utah police after an anonymous caller says the gentleman slapped the girl. Um, caller walks up to them and apparently the couple walked up and down the sidewalk, then a gentleman proceeded to hit her and drove off. Police found the couple arguing, but they did not want to press charges against each other. August 12th, Brian Laundrie flies home to Florida to obtain some items. Items and August 23rd, Laundrie rejoins Petito in Salt Lake City. August 27th, involved in a commotion outside the Mary Pickless restaurant. Petito was described as being in tears and Laundrie was visibly angry. In the last week of August, which is believed to be Petito's last week live, August 24th, Petito FaceTimes her mother to tell her she's leaving Utah. August 25th through the 27th, multiple texts are exchanged between Petito and her mother, and she's believed to be in the tents. August 29th, a couple claims they gave Laundry a ride in Culture Bay. Laundry told them they, he had been camping outside the tent park, and August 30th, the family receives the last strange text from Petito. No service in Yosemite. September 29th, her body is discovered. So, according to this Reddit post, Gabby and Brian moved to New York in June and they changed their address really quickly before the trip. And that is a little bit weird that he has family in Florida. It just seems weird that they moved all the way up to New York right before the trip. Why did they move to New York in June, especially? And who are they staying with in New York? Like, did they know anybody there? Do they have friends? It could have just been a coincidence because I recently did move out of state and I did go on a vacation quickly after I went to my brother's wedding. Yeah, it is, it's a little bit strange. That we don't true. really know. Fortunately not. As far as the uh, no service in Yosemite text and what happened and all the events that unfolded, you know, what were Brian's short term plans? He kind of seemed like it might have been a winging thing. Did he really believe sending that text wouldn't bring any suspicion to them? Him acting normal, especially when he returned for about two weeks, did he just plan to live his life normally, thinking it wouldn't come back to haunt him, or thinking that nobody would notice her missing and not with him? I definitely think that that text is a key part to her time of death, because I, I don't think she would have sent that or that would have been her last text also think that that was not very smart of him to send that he definitely was trying to get away with murder and like another point on top of that too is the fact that how is he gonna explain why he has gabby's van especially if that's her means to travel i don't know anybody not think that's a, just a little bit weird maybe he tried to convince everybody they got in a fight that she's still traveling but either way, I don't think she would travel without her van. And what's crazy too about the van is that his parents keep their other cars outside. But the van was kept in the garage, so it makes me think that they definitely cleaned up that van. Because if they didn't, then we would have a lot more evidence, I believe. It's definitely a key part in solving this case. Yeah, I feel like, you know, there's a lot around this case that just doesn't make sense and there's some key, like, missing pieces. And, you know, with his parents and all that stuff, and with him coming home and then them not reporting him missing until, like, days later. After a just, camping trip. Yeah, just, it kind of just makes you think, were his parents involved? Were they not involved? I personally think that his parents had, to the very least, have to know I think that they had to know because how did his van get cleaned up? 
and then the fact that his parents didn't report him missing until days after the camping trip and I think that was to get him a head start into maybe I know a lot of criminals have been known to try to go to other countries in Central America or Mexico and escape and especially in Florida there's so much wildlife in the Everglades that you can definitely hide in places. That is very true. Um, it kind of just makes you wonder, was his death suicidal, like I said? Or did wildlife take him out? Or is there another possibility as to what happened to this? Could be, there be like foul play involved in this? We obviously won't know for a couple weeks as far as his autopsy results, but it just kind of makes you wonder because the fact that they found his skeletal remains and not like, you know, his body. Like, yeah, they found him. his teeth and immediately they were able to identify him. But Gabby, it took a little bit longer to... But I can, I can see it with his death going a few different ways. The two most probable causes first is being he murdered her or murdered her by accident and he felt guilty or he didn't want to go to jail. There's a lot of school shooters that right after they commit the crime, they end up killing themselves because one, most of them have some sort of mental health issue and there's not a lot of money for the mental health crisis in America. But it could also be that wildlife did get to him because again, in Florida, they have all sorts of wildlife. They have alligators, poisonous snakes, shark, you name it. And then another thing that could have been, this is a little bit of a stretch, basically maybe somebody else got to him before the police could because there's people out there that will see that people commit crimes such as rape and they will go kill those rapists themselves because that's their way getting justice i don't know if you agree with that Possible. there's just so many variables in this yeah, and I mean, what makes it even stranger is the fact he had a second cell phone. So I don't know if he was trying to keep in touch with his parents or somebody. I would think if you're gonna kill yourself, you would- I don't think you would want to bring a second phone. Right, that is true. Could have been acting on, like, a lack of impulse or irrationality. And with the second cell phone too that does make it seem more like it could be something with the wildlife maybe his parents got him a second cell phone because the police wouldn't be able to track it and say he was heading towards costa rica he would be able to text them and be like i am safe or his parents could just track it without him even texting and just see okay he made it to costa rica then nothing really can be done with the justice system unfortunately if criminals do successfully make it to other countries especially in central america that is very true that's very true so far it seems all signs are pointing to the fact that brian more than likely definitely killed gabby and possibly he killed himself but not for sure yet with the history of him having like aggression towards her and her crying especially in the instance of mary piglets the restaurant where an instagrammer obviously saw what was happening and described gabby as upset and Brian is angry and he was being very temperamental towards the restaurant staff and they were going back and forth between outside and the restaurant. That being said, with his history, it's very sad that this happened. Domestic violence seems like a, a very good possibility and like an accidental death, like he didn't mean to kill her, happened and seems like he was just trying to not do any prison time. Especially whenever the inc incident with the police where she's crying, he seems that, oh, that's normal for her, but 
in all honesty and being in a relationship if I was in her shoes Presley would not think that it's normal for me to be crying like that he wouldn't it seemed like he kind of brushed it off and then what's crazy about the whole Mary Piglet situation is that the Instagram has that story but the manager of the restaurant has a whole different story to them she was saying that he wasn't making that big of a deal which is just really interesting and then also the fact that the security footage was erased when the police went to try to get this footage and like nowhere had footage at all of Gabby Petito which I find a little bit bizarre that maybe it was premeditated we can't confirm that but the fact that no one has any camera evidence of her coming in the restaurant seems a little bit off yeah all signs and all evidence is seems like pointing to brian at this point he's the last person to see her alive and that text that she or her parents you know got from her phone was not her now do you think that the parents were involved I mean, it's very possible they could be involved, but it's very possible that they could be clueless on this one. The way they went about it, and the fact that they withheld information from the police on him not being there, they haven't heard from him for a couple of days, it could be possible that they gave him a, like, a head start to get away from the police. I mean, some parents go as far as protecting their children no matter what, even if they've murdered somebody. A thing too, they could be, even though I do think that they are involved, they could also be totally innocent because, again, he did get a lawyer, so maybe the lawyer told him that they really need to keep quiet and then also they may have been scared seeing what he did to her knowing what he did to her and what he might do to them and so that's maybe why that they kept quiet but the fact that there was a second cell phone involved kind of makes me think that the family had to be helping out as much as i hate to say it does feel like that yeah sure how do you think the police handled the situation i mean i feel like they could have done a better job i feel like they tried their best in their own ways in their own terms but i feel like this case as a whole this possibly could have been prevented it possibly could not have been prevented but i feel like they could have done a lot more to find her a lot sooner a couple of weeks after she had been missing I definitely do think that the police could have done a lot better. For example, with the dash cam video of her crying after he sla supposedly slapped her, I think that instead of just separating them just for a night, they should have probably done it for a couple nights and maybe after that incident she did want to possibly break up with him but that's the most dangerous time to break up with someone during a domestic violence case and then maybe if they asked her some more questions they might have found out more and have been help been able to help her get away safely i also think too that definitely they need to try to get more information from the parents and the sister i feel like a lot of information would come out they definitely should still do their more thorough investigation into this and ask a lot more questions from the family for sure and then uh, recently a gun was turned in where they searched Brian Laundry. So I think that that will definitely help a lot with this case. I think that's a key part of it. And so the gun probably could confirm both that he 
did kill her and then two, it could confirm that he did decide to commit suicide. Before knowing about the gun, I kind of, I was kind of between both wildlife getting to him and him killing himself, but the fact that there is a gun now makes me more think that his death was by suicide. Yeah, it's, it's very likely. With all this going on, as much as this is definitely not the kind of outcome anybody wants for their kid, because of Gabby Petito's body being found, the police have been able to find multiple other missing bodies, which is really good because that helps close some of those other cases that people have been searching for years and years. It provides a lot more closure. Yeah, it does. This case has definitely opened up a lot more things and more awareness to domestic violence and mental health um, and how our system is not as good as it should be and the fact that they found other bodies that were missing that these people could have been missing for weeks or years or months and because of all this that's happened they found these bodies which is really something to say to be honest so thank you for listening to murders mysteries and more remember to always keep your eyes open because you never know when somebody's creeping